Okay, so now finally, we're going to talk about the big picture philosophy. We start with the first principles that we've already established, and we start with the democratic system as a reference point. As a student in the democratic system, you basically get to do whatever you want. As long as you're not hurting or disturbing anyone, nobody can tell you what to do. But the big picture philosophy has a tiny bit of a mandate, which is this. Again, you are free to do whatever you want. You're free to pursue whatever interest or passion you may have. But you need to tell the teachers what it is that you're doing. And you need to deliver a real world output related to your interests. So say you're interested in art. Now, rather than just leave you to it, like in the democratic system, in big picture, we have a discussion with you to explore the real world applications of your interest. Do you want to make a canvas painting and try to sell it? Or maybe you want to get into graphic design and start creating logos and websites. It's completely your choice, but we do expect and demand that there be a real world output, something that you can get paid for in the real world. Or let's say you're interested in writing. Now, you may not know as a kid how the real world works and what are all the different possibilities. So that's where the adults or the teachers come in and help you with that. What kind of stuff do you want to write? Do you want to write a fiction novel because you have a wild imagination? Or maybe you're more focused on facts and reality and you want to write like a journalist. You can choose anything as long as it has a real world output. So that's it. If you see it from a student's perspective, instead of getting complete freedom, you have this tiny bit of a mandate of delivering a real world output, but it's based on your interest and allows for a lot of freedoms. So hopefully it doesn't feel like a mandate. Now, from the teacher's perspective, first of all, you can see that the adults do have an active role to play in the big picture system. The role of the adults or advisors, as we like to call them, can be broken down into a simple two-step process. The first step, is to unearth and understand the natural energy of each child. What are their passions? What are their interests? What are their talents? And the next step is to connect this raw material, this natural drive, to real world work, to jobs, professions and projects that exist in the real world. So in terms of philosophy, that's pretty much the only difference between democratic education and big picture. And we'll now get into some of the practices. The big picture process comes together in the form of a learning cycle, which is around two months long. Now let's understand this learning cycle by taking the example of the child that was interested in art. We start the cycle by talking to the child about what their interests are. Of course, in this case, we know it's art. In the conversation, we explore different real world possibilities, graphic design, digital art, fine art, whatever the child might find interesting. Now let's say the child wants to explore graphic design. So we have a conversation with the student, exposing them to graphic design and exploring the field together. We help the child come up with a few projects that he can take within the domain. How about designing a logo or creating a brochure for this particular product? Or how about creating some digital art that can be printed on a t-shirt? So now the student will set some goals for the two month cycle and the advisor will regularly have one on one meetings with the student to check in on the progress. We see if the student is stuck anywhere, we help them make connections to experts, find more inspiration, just help them in general to execute their goals. At the end of the cycle, we have what we call an exhibition, where the student presents all her work to an audience that has her parents, her mentors, her peers, and of course, the advisor. So that completes one cycle. Now in the beginning of the next cycle, we again start with a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the student. How was the experience of the last cycle? What did you enjoy doing? What did you not enjoy? And what's next for you? The student might say something like, you know, I enjoyed making the brochure because there was already a structure and some content for me to work with, but I didn't really enjoy making logos because that's too abstract. Cool, interesting. So what do you want to do now? If you really had a mental block with the logos, maybe you want to try it again. Maybe watch some videos or talk to some mentors about how they do it. Or if that's feeling too overwhelming, maybe explore less abstract stuff like web design. Or hey, maybe you want to try a completely different field that's got nothing to do with graphic design. Again, the student sets their goals for the next cycle and off we go. So let's summarize this cycle. We start with some discussions and reflections. 
The student then tries to create a plan and set some goals for the cycle. The student then goes about pursuing these goals by actually doing the work and the cycle culminates with an exhibition. And then the next cycle again begins with some reflection and discussion and so on. Each cycle helps the student explore different passions and interests and that too in a very concrete way by actually doing stuff, not just thinking about it, not just reading about it, not just talking about it, but actually doing stuff. And then every subsequent cycle builds on top of all the previous cycles. Through this process, we are constantly discussing with the child what they liked, what they didn't like, and we keep helping them explore who they are, what they like doing, and perhaps most importantly, how you can do something meaningful with that and create real world value, how you can get paid to do what you enjoy doing. Once the kids are a bit older, starting around 7th grade, we start encouraging them to take internships. Internships are a huge part of the Big Picture program. Of course, the best way to learn how to work in the real world is to first be in the real world outside the walls of the school. This really takes the learning to a whole different level because now the kids are learning how to work in a team with real world professionals. So along with doing passion projects, the students start taking internships in the fields of their own interest. So that's the big picture process in a nutshell. Of course, it's a massive oversimplification, but it's a great starting point for me to build up from. We started with a democratic system where there is complete freedom for the children. But in big picture, we have imposed a tiny bit of a structure. We've demanded that whatever the students do should be connected to the real world. But I hope you realize that this tiny bit of a mandate is also an adult agenda. And I've seen over the last seven years that with some of the kids, even this can interfere. It starts feeling like an adult agenda and some of them start seeing it as some homework that the adults have asked them to do. So many times we have to take a step back and revert to a more democratic style where we just let the child be and do whatever they want. But it's quite humbling to realize that whatever this is, is also an adult agenda. And with all adult agendas, we have to be very, very careful. But then why did we add this mandate and structure? We will get to that in a video called Why Big Picture. For now, I wanted to continue building out the big picture process and specifically the learning cycle. Because you see, this learning cycle is not just some random thing that happens only in big picture. It's connected to many big ideas from the real world. You may have heard of Agile and Scrum which are project management philosophies, and they also rely on cycles, on creating iteration after iteration after iteration. You might have heard of the PDCA cycle of continuous improvement, which stands for plan, do, check, and act. And it's very much connected to the ideas in this incredible book that we're going to turn to next. This is really one of my all-time favorite books, and it's called Designing Your Life.